This is Parker's Crossroads on Legendary Difficulty. And you have played this battle before. You know it can be very tough. The enemy can come at you with uh, really good units and well-equipped. And the enemy has terrific defensive terrain. And he attacks from all directions. And uh, you're heavily outnumbered in the beginning. So, yeah, the, the end result of this battle is that I lose uh, 28 90 just under 3,000 men, and at Fredericksburg, I lost just over 3,000, and I screwed up the math. I got about 5 to 1. Um, at Fredericksburg, here, I'm going to get 4.6 to 1. So, but the big thing here was I got them all. I mean, I had plenty of time, and uh, it it's a battle that at the end, you have, you outnumber the enemy, and if you're very patient, you can take them all out, even though they're in just terrific cover, and it's uh, it's not easy to do. It can be very costly. I was willing to, I was hoping to get out of this with three to one. Uh, so when I got um, 4.6 to one, I was really happy. So I've seen this on Legendary with Atheist, Atheist and Ray Rivers. And every unit doesn't have to have three stars here. My experience is that generally the enemy does, but it doesn't have to be that way. I think Ray Rivers, um, a lot of the units didn't have three stars. so. That is uh, maybe a bit of a uh, random die roll. So I'm taking my units to 1800, particularly 1st Division, because uh, I'm absolutely convinced I'm going to take a lot of casualties and it's going to be a bloody battle. I think I'm going to lose more than I do, and I'm prepared for it. And I need uh, these units to fight the entire battle. Uh, I don't... One of these units doesn't come in to the battle, so I thought because... Uh, you get reinforcements, you always get one more. It doesn't happen in this battle. So one of these units doesn't come in. It's uh, an 1800 man unit doesn't come in. So, uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. So, what else? Oh, after the battle, the enemy gets uh, 13,100 crack troops and 11,200 transfers and goes up in training to 69 to 74. So the enemy is consistently going up one or two in every battle, no matter what I do. No matter if I wipe them out or I don't, it doesn't matter. And I think if you were to save in the middle of the battle uh, and play the battle out, I think you get the same result. But if you refight a battle, and the reason I know this is there's a battle I refight because I arm everybody with, um, I, I arm, my artillery with Whitworth to see how they do. I want to experiment with the Whitworth. I refight the battle with 20 pound parrots to compare and contrast the two battles and see how they do across the battle. And 20 pound parrots are better, but also I get a different result. So if the result screen changes, uh, if you fight a completely new battle, but I don't think it does if you like save in the middle and then just re try to re roll the final result. So that's important because at the end of some battles, you can get a result where training just goes up 10 points or uh, armory goes up over 10 points. And um, that's a thing that happens. I outnumber the enemy here, but as you know, this is just a tough, bloody battle. So uh, I'm going to let the uh, battle play out, and then I'm going to show you the camp at the end. And since this is mostly just moving stuff around, I'm not going to talk at the, the end uh, when I go into camp. But before Stones River, you have to empty out your uh, all your cash. Uh, the reason for that is at the end of the first day, the AI will fill up your supply wagons, and if your supply wagons are empty, and they should be, uh, that's $70,000. And that comes out of your cash. And at the end of the battle, you would just get all that for free. You're, um, but at the end of the battle, instead of giving you back the $70,000, you are just out the $70,000. So the way you defeat that and not lose $70,000 is you have no cash. So there's, there's nothing to be taken out. So I have to spend an enormous amount of money in camp. And I buy 
of course I buy all the guns, which I've been doing, that's not new. But after buying all the guns, I still have a lot of money. So what I do is I buy a big pile, because uh, you can use cannon as currency because you don't lose anything. If you have economy torque, you know, filled out, you don't lose anything. It's buy price and sell price are the same. So I buy about $100,000 of um, uh, 10 pound ordnance and 10 pound parrots, which is okay. I'm going to need that anyway, and I can always sell them for the purchase price and not lose any cash later. I also buy a big pile of rifles um, to outfit my guys with to upgrade. I think I buy a bunch of 55s. I don't know if I buy Harper's Ferries or just 55s. Um, so that uh, going into Stones River, well, you know how it is. You want your best troops to have really good weapons, but you don't want to give 63s to units that have 20 efficiency. That's just a waste. So you want to give units the weapons that they're capable of using well. So yeah, I, I, I want to upgrade weapons. At the end of this battle, the enemy gives me some CS Richmonds um, and Tyler Texases. Um, I have grown to like the Tyler Texas. I, I was poo-pooing it earlier, but it's not a bad weapon. And if you have a whole bunch of units that are 25 efficiency, it's a perfect weapon for those units. So uh, anyway, the point is that coming going into Stones River, I have a nice big inventory of weapons. I get my uh, cash down to zero. I want to take my, and this, this is an important discussion because I see people getting this wrong. The max efficiency of your units, if I understand Panda Kraut correctly, uh, is 1650. So that's where the units are the most effective. And if you go beyond that, they're, they're not more effective. But if, if you take them beyond 1800, you, you really notice that they move a lot slower and they're cumbersome and they turn slowly and they reload slowly. They just don't perform very well. And if you take them to, you know, 2,000, 2,200, 2,500, they're, they're just so slow and ineffective. And Ray Rivers talks about that too. Uh, he made units over 2,000, but they just, you know, they don't perform well. So I'm taking my units, I want them to be about 1,650, and I'll take them higher than that if I think they're going to bleed down. So if I think they're going to lose a couple hundred men, I'll go like 1,600 and then but no more than 1,800. So if I think it's going to be a bloody battle, I might take them to 1,800, thinking that they'll bleed down to the max uh, effective range, which is 1,650. And then they'll have some period of time, they'll be at, say, 1,700. And also, you know, I, I detach skirmishers. Uh, skirmishers are a way to really leverage your troops um, and get more coverage of the battlefield, and they're very, very effective particularly placed on the flanks of enemy, and they give you visibility. They're a, a real plus. So if you have a unit that's 1,800, you detach skirmishers. You, you have a really efficient unit. I don't know if the detached skirmishers affect the effectiveness. It doesn't seem to. So if they're detached, your unit seems to be in that sweet spot where it performs really well. Anyway, um, that's kind of my thinking. And so that that's what you'll see is depending on the cost to do it, and I'm still just pouring in raw recruits into my units as much as possible. Um, I, I'll want first division to be a little larger because they're going to be fighting longer, doing the heavy lifting, taking more casualties. But then second division, third division, fourth division generally are on the field for less time. So anyway, that's my thought. So I, I uh, show you how I build first core, and then I just duplicate that, passing down good weapons, upgrading the weapons of my units, depending on their efficiency, uh, mostly putting in raw recruits, building a ton of artillery, which of course I like, and um, getting ready for Stones River. And uh, I was real, ha real happy with this battle. Uh, one of the things uh, I want you to notice is his 10 pound parrots are hitting my units that are in the in good cover right now, 100% cover in the woods, and just inflicting a ton of casualties. Um, you can't get away from them, and because the crew are all three stars, 
probably have perks. Uh, they, they just they just do a lot of damage. Uh, and you're going to see that at Nansaman River, too, where I, I have my infantry back off, long-range fire from 10-pound parrots, and I lose, like, 400 men while my artillery is wiping out his artillery. His artillery is killing about 400 of my guys who are in the woods at a, at a pretty long distance away. So, yeah, on Legendary, his units are super deadly, and there's no way to escape them. Anyway, uh, we're getting into the battle. Uh, you can see I've drawn up a nice defensive line, and I'm waiting for my reinforcements to come in, and that's pretty much it. I want him to attack across this big open area. Happy with how the battle goes, happy with the outcome. Very happy that I killed them all. Um, killed um, 13,300, but if uh, the after-action report is right, he got 24,000-plus men, so... Uh, his manpower pool just keeps going up. But that's okay, because we're going to take a chunk out of it at Stones River, because I intend to kill them all. So, anyway, I'll see you at Stones River. Thanks for watching.
Come on, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 